All right, good morning. Good evening, good night, and it is a good morning. We are having ourselves and are going to have ourselves a great episode. It is an amazing Friday, beautiful where I'm at. Hopefully, it's beautiful where you are. Nice to see everybody in the house as we get Layer 1 Live going on this Friday, March 5th, 2021, baby. It's feeling good. The markets have a little bit of action going on. There's there's a lot happening from the news standpoint that just kind of broke uh, as I was putting the episode together here. So we're going to kind of go through this together. We are breaking down the markets, whether that be NFTs, DeFi, just broad crypto news. I know Ethereum had a lot of cool things that the lads were talking about uh, here uh, in the last hour. So we're going to hit a ton of this stuff. We are excited to have you guys in here. Uh, obviously, I am Q Solo today. Uh, but we are going to get after it. So I've got an episode breakdown in front of me as everyone kind of files in here. I will break down some of what's been happening in Lad City and we will get into the episode. But let me hit some of these comments and I will get going. Easy and Crypto is first. He's going to be our vibe, our tribe. Oh, my coins is second. L Din says first time catching the lads live. Amazing stuff, man. Amazing stuff. Glad to have you. Jacob says it's his second time here. The the episode, I always say this, the episode is better if you guys are commenting along. So please go ahead and do so. Cannot wait to get this going. Uh, we are we may cover we may cover some some stellar here today, easy. Uh, but we are getting uh, ourselves go going. Uh, drop some links in Lad City if you do have those, and then we can start to get after it, man. So uh all right so we have the episode breakdown it is a sad day for my quick bags polygon was implemented into uh sushi we're going to touch on that but the biggest news of the day is going to come from ethereum eip 1559 is is going to be implemented in july uh it officially got passed vote was passed uh by the foundation by the powers that be uh and regardless if the miners are going to see a little bit less uh, rewards here with these these uh, these implementations. It's going to go uh, and going to go through. And then we also have we also have optimistic rollups. Uh, Ethereum optimism kind of uh, creeping its way in there. I know there's there's talks of mainnets and things like that. So far, Synthetics has used it on a private mainnet, uh, and up until now, we haven't seen that go live. So we'll break that down here in a second. Arthur Hayes. There was some bad news about him. I think he's going to turn himself in, but he did grace the crypto world with an awesome blog article, kind of a macro investment strategy uh, that we'll go through in breaking. And then the Dallas Mavericks accepting Dogecoin. You know, Cuban's going to do what Cuban's going to do. Uh, so we are going to hit those in breaking news. We've got quick news. We've been shilling Binance for a little bit here. Uh, so we're going to eat some crow and have to you know talk about what's been happening with binance here uh and some rug pulls that's happened bison trails kava nvidia settling a lawsuit sbf is a rich man and then of course sushi is going to be a polygon then we hit nfts and we hit DeFi. and DeFi today is primarily going to be polka dot there's some interesting things going on in the the uh, dot ecosystem and we are going to get after it but as i like to say man every time we do these episodes they, they are better when you guys are commenting along if i'm just sitting here talking to myself breaking down the news i could do that without being live it wouldn't be nearly as fun without you guys in the chat so definitely uh definitely break down what you think i should be talking about today and you guys are part of the conversation as well so really really awesome stuff to have you here on this friday and we're going to break down everything that was just talked about uh let's see Gene Gene sends Gene Gene is saying what it do layer one fam easy and crypto saying the godfather master Q rocking it solo today and then Gene Gene saying don't forget to like Eldon is saying excited to learn about the ETH news and easy saying he dropped that stellar news okay I will bring that up uh, later in the episode around the DeFi portion uh, possibly uh, easy and then we can hit that but definitely start to get the link out it is looking like a like everyone's kind of streaming in here a little bit late so we need to get the word out let everybody know in lad city that we are live push the tweet that we put out via layer one crypto uh, and if it's your first time here welcome in we are about to just get after the news today so quick thing from lad city we had a survey competition go on uh so basically 
all the lads were, were given a survey. If they wanted to fill it out, the top three were going to be able to uh, receive 500 lads. Uh, it was like, a, I believe, a 12-question survey that was put together by Hunter, one of our noble lads himself. And we had a ton of, of signups there, ton of uh, submissions that were put forth. Uh, and we're going to choose three. We already actually have the three. I'm going to do that right now now uh, and these were the top three most impactful surveys so if you spend a little time which we definitely had i think an average time spent on this survey of like 10 minutes hunter was saying so absolutely crazy engagement i think we had 53 uh people uh kind of come through and start to sign this up uh and we will uh we will definitely uh announce these right now so the three people with the most impactful surveys here bait shop billy bullseye north and china top three they won that they won that uh, competition i believe i need to make sure how many lads they're actually receiving i don't want to go out on a limb and say they're receiving uh, more than they might but i will drop that in lad city but those were the winners you are going to be earning those lads i just need to make sure what range it's between uh before i get get on a public and, and say you're you know raining the lads on you okay so that survey happened we're going to break those down and hunter is actually going to be breaking that stuff down uh, for us uh, in the moderator chat and then we will distribute to the community and let you guys know what was happening so uh that those were the winners we had easy street last night uh in lad city he he was interviewing twitch it that was an amazing conversation i i'm consistently blown away and i have easy in the chat right now at how fast easy has been able to kind of get easy street going and bring awesome interviewees into the channel so uh and into the city so if you guys don't know about easy street easy is a fantastic interviewer uh he brings some of the awesome creators from around the community uh and around crypto in to lad city he drops some lads he hears you know about uh the project and he lets the he, he does a great job of letting the project founder kind of break it down there so uh easy street was last night had great attendance lads game night is tonight and lads radio so buffalo is going to do lads radio at 6 p 6 p.m eastern standard and then game night is going to be at 7 p.m eastern standard uh morning everybody gb is in the house danny dan is in the house welcome in fellas great to see you here on this wonderful friday we are just getting started here kind of just going through some of the lads news as we get ready to get after it Easy and Crypto saying that was a great show. Next week, working on a big guest. And L. Din saying, What time are his interviews missed yesterday? I'm sure Easy and Crypto uh, can get you that information. And then Flint Savage, welcome into the channel, my man. Okay, so that's pretty much it, man. There, it, it is a very heavy, heavy, heavy uh, news filled day as far as crypto is concerned. We saw a little bit of a pullback on some of these assets. Uh, and then we actually, you know, are kind of ranging for a little bit. We're sitting around 49 for Bitcoin. It looks like uh, Ethereum sitting at 1500, definitely cashing in a little bit on uh, that news that EIP 1559 has been passed. And then uh, we can go down the list uh, a little bit more and see that there's some assets that are performing fairly well. Uh, shout out to my flow gang. Uh, and I know that you guys in the US are upset, uh, but, you know, there's it's shout out to the flow game they're having a great time so uh other than that all-time high is going to be 116 uh if we pass 116 today you will be earning double lads i know the lads links haven't been that successful i'll i'll pretty much keep that lads link live as long as i can i don't know what's going on in the back end i have a, a call with roll next week uh about that that stuff so definitely definitely uh let uh, me know if that link is not working as we get ready to drop that later in the episode uh, but i know people have been having issues uh please leave a like please leave a subscribe if it's your first time here uh we we have the lads community awesome crypto community that gets after it pretty much every week uh they're breaking down all the news from around the industry we're cross projects so we're really kind of just garnering all the information and bringing them back into lad city so okay I think we are ready to go. Not sure what's going on with, with the low uh, amount of people trickling in here. Usually, uh, the beginning of the episode, we're just kind of flying. So, I think people are trickling, trickling in on their Friday. Maybe, the, you know, NFT Live or something like that last time where it was just kind of 
you know, taking a little bit. Maybe people are a little bit cautious to hop in when they're like, is this going to take another 45 minutes? Thank you so much for you guys hopping in into NFT live on Wednesday, even though we had the issues. Uh, and then Ballas is saying, sorry for joining late. What is going on? All right. So this is what we're doing. Uh, we're starting with breaking news. EIP 1559 just got passed and, and basically was uh, agreed upon uh, by most of Ethereum developers and most of the Ethereum community. The only people that really have a problem with what's going on with EIP 1559 is going to be the miners and we will talk about that here in a second. Cat is in the house, the great Catsby himself. Uh, nice to see you, man. So this is the situation. Uh, EIP 1559 is allowing for a little bit more scalability when it comes to and a little bit more uh, you know better user experience when it comes to the ethereum network itself the layer one network the ethereum virtual machine whatever you want to call it eip 1559 that's looking to be implemented uh later in the summertime i believe it's july uh is going to be implemented and it's going to allow for a set gas fee uh so people that you know are, are obviously transacting with the ethereum network they're currently placing uh, uh i guess a gas number that they like to see go through uh and then that is essentially being forced into a queue and you know the miners can or can't uh decide to pick that up depending on you know whether they get a lot more and, and what have you uh or a lot better fee so we're having a lot of issues with traditional transaction fees here within the ethereum network eip uh, 1559 is looking to uh, kind of solve that. So I'm going to read directly from the article here. Ethereum's EIP 1559 fee market overhaul greenlit for July. Uh, one of the most significant and contentious alterations to the Ethereum blockchain in recent memory is now scheduled for inclusion into its code base. So EIP 1559 will be packaged with the London hard fork. As we said, that's going to be later in July. And it's uh, I believe it's, yeah, we're going to continue to see this flips a typical blockchain transaction on its head in order to fix numerous issues with Ethereum's user experience traditionally. And here we go. A user ends, user sends a gas fee to a miner for a transaction to be included in a block. That gas fee will now be sent to the network itself as a sort of burn called base fee uh, with only an optional tip paid to miners. The burn, the burnt fee is algorithmically set as well, ostensibly making it easier for users to pay a fair fee. So I know I do have a lot of, of really smart individuals in the house and feel free to join this conversation with me. But again, the two things that are important when it comes to EIP 1559 are that set fee. So when someone, you know, puts a, a, a you know transaction that they want to get inside of a block that fee is actually set across and that is going to make sure that that transaction goes through the second portion is it looks like there's a burn mechanic here that is going to essentially make eth deflationary so those two pieces alone are a major overhaul to what <laughs> ethereum has been dealing with in the past i would say uh you know since it's since its inception and there were a lot of people that were asking you know why did it take so long why is vitalik taking so long here uh with implementing this why is the rest of the ethereum foundation why did it take so long to get to this point to which i saw a lot of the arguments kind of say there are a lot of assets there are a lot of uh you know uh capital that is actually like being locked up on this chain so security was i think overtaking uh any type of of want to move quickly so that is kind of the the update here we have this scheduled for later in july it's going to be part of that london fork uh and there there is a little bit of undercurrent here from the the miner community right that you know mining and that, as we go down later in these this article they're talking about how lucrative mining has been as we've seen gas fees skyrocket but the problem is most everyone else other than miners in the entire ethereum ecosystem is really trying to move forward on this because the user experience is so terrible there, there there cannot be a situation where we have more and more people come into ethereum and it gets less and less usable that's kind of what we're trying to solve here and it looks like we're trying to you know also fix the fact that eth is inflationary maybe that helps the token obviously from a, a mechanical standpoint and a token tokenomic standpoint that's going to help uh, all right, so we got Coin Hunter in the house. Sup Q, Eldin saying yes, if it works and doesn't disincentivize the miners. Flint Savage saying with enough use, it will make def def deflationary. Big news. And Eldin saying glad they took their time to ensure it's done right. 100%. Uh, great comments there. It looks like Bullseye's in the house as well. Great to see everybody in the house. So 
here's here's the contentious part. Over 60%, I'm reading directly from here, uh, and this is an article on Coindesk, over 60% of the Ethereum network's hash power is now against this proposal. F2 pool is the largest pool in favor of the EIP with some 10% of the hash power. So this is this is not good, right? You have 60% of the hash power on Ethereum saying, we don't actually want to do this. The question being, when that hard fork happens or when that fork uh does happen later in July uh, with uh, with London. Is that going to be something where the Ethereum miners say, hey, we don't want to be a part of this. We're actually going to hard fork and create our own network. The problem with that being you can't hard fork the community, right? You, if, if you hard fork that and you try to create your own network that still stays with the maintenance fees and or the gas fees that currently exist, the community isn't necessarily going to follow you. So you're actually going to probably be losing out on a ton of that uh, revenue that's coming in because of the usage on the network. So usage on the network, more usage equals more dollars. But with this implementation, I think that there was something around 50% was was what they were looking at as far as uh, uh, the actual like cut in revenue when this uh, London fork kind of goes into implementation later in July. So this is the, the, the news that that basically is it right? You, it's a, it's a big piece. It's saying, Hey, the minor community does not want to take part in this. And then we have the Ethereum community, the dApps, the developers, the users, everyone out Vitalik himself, everybody wants to move, uh, with this EIP 1559, the miners do not. So, uh, we're going to move on without them, uh, apparently. And, and, uh, the question being asked here, could they sabotage or strike? Definitely. Definitely. That's a huge, huge issue, uh, with what might happen here. So, Will it happen? I'm not necessarily, uh, you know, going to say that that's probably going to be the case because again, when you do, if you do do that hard fork, so when everyone, when EIP 1559 is looking to be implemented, when that upgrade does happen, if you do hard fork and create your own network, let's just call it, you know, Ethereum, don't call it Ethereum 2.0. Can't do that. Just call it Ethereum fork. Then you basically have no, no community until you start bringing those people on. So is there going to be usage that then you are getting gas fees on? Who knows? So let's see. Uh, I guess MEV, which I'm not going to go into today, uh, is kind of a stopgap for this. Miner extracted value. It allows miners to take advantage of their place as arbiters and how blocks are packaged to front run pot, uh, profitable trades. Easy and Crypto saying off topic, but been looking at hardware wallets and saw Binance has a hard wallet now. I did not know that. So Overman, that's that's a great point. Uh, William Quigley, I believe the founder of Wax, uh, predicted an ETH 2.0 hard fork. ETH 1.0 is too lucrative for the miners right now. This is an interesting point because EIP 1559 isn't necessarily related to ETH 2.0 uh, in the sense of and we'll get to uh, we'll get to optimism uh, here to, in optimistic rollups here in a second because that's kind of related. So you have on one side EIP 1559, uh, and then you have as well as the push out of optimism and what that can do for the Ethereum network. So E 2.0 is a little bit outside of that realm. Uh, I'll, I'll actually bring that up now, but uh, I love this this governance kind of taking place in real time. It sucks for for the miners, uh, you know, but. To be honest, you know, they've been making a ton of money here uh, in the last, uh, I would say, six months. Uh, James Jafal saying, feeling the tunes, my dude. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, we, we wanted to put some tune behind, uh, you know, and, and clear that dead space a little bit. See uh, how that worked out today. So we're going to have to figure out some copyright issues, I'm sure. But, you know, they, YouTube's not going to take the uh the episode down by any means they're just going to demonetize it which is no problem at this point uh because youtube can go screw off uh from their monetization structure anyways is black rifle coffee a sponsor one day okay so this is this is interesting and i hope this is the thread that actually has uh the, that actually has the optimism and, and how the process actually works. Yeah, this is great. Okay, so optimism is getting ready for its rollout as well. Uh, and a couple dApps like Synthetics have been implementing optimism and optimistic rollups uh, here uh, over the past, I would say, six months. I think November was when I, I saw a uh, Kane Warwick post on optimism. 
So optimism is a layer two uh, solution, but it's really less of a layer two and more of like a, a child chain. I don't, I don't want to get too caught up in uh, the terminology here, but you have layer twos like XDI, you have layer twos like Polygon, and those are almost completely separate from the Ethereum network itself, but Optimism is almost like in the same family. So it, it, it does help uh, scalability. It is technically a layer two, but it has more to do with Ethereum than say Polygon and XDI. Uh, this was a absolutely phenomenal. Uh, I'm gonna post this here uh, along with the Crypto Haze article because these are two threads uh, that break this down phenomenally uh, what optimism is as well as uh, when we hit Arthur we'll hit on kind of a macro investment strategy you should be looking at so easy and crypto saying digging the tunes uh, no doubt James Paul I kept wondering if I had another jams tab open let me know if that's too loud I don't know if it's coming through a little bit and also guys let me know what you guys want me to cover uh, we have a large large piece of news here today as more people start to roll and roll uh, into the episode, uh, but I definitely want to keep uh, the majority of the episode open to you guys as well uh, as far as any news we're hearing. Uh, paid actually just got hacked. We might be able to touch on that together. That happened like 30 minutes before we went live, and that was a big piece of news. I think that was going to be like one of the largest hacks here uh, in the last couple months. Uh, so we will get to this paid hack uh, and exploit here in a second. I believe the the hardware keys or the private keys were able to kind of do an unlimited mint function and then you just see literally the, uh, like the biggest red candle that you've ever seen in your life i think something around 50 mil uh, at one point uh was sold on open market so uh the music is a little loud maybe lower by one or two i can do that let's see what happens let me know if that works I don't, I don't know necessarily if it's coming through on my end as much as it's coming through on your guys' end. So definitely keep me updated. Uh, I turned it down just a little bit. Uh, but if you can't hear it, I can pull it up one or two more. Okay, so uh, Xerox Rafi here, he did a great job of, of doing uh, or kind of breaking down uh, what optimism is. Okay, so again, ETH, two, ETH layer two solution. This, this isn't really have much to do with ETH 2.0, although it will be implemented once ETH makes that jump you know, later in, in maybe in 2022 or something later in 2021. Uh, all right. So I'll, I'll just read directly from the tweet and see where it takes us. Uh, other than that, we can, uh, oh, music was perfect. So maybe I'll turn it up one more. Uh, let's try it. Okay. As the optimism, uh, team has dropped news that their mainlet launch has been brought forward. I thought it would be useful to go through what the optimism ETH layer two solution is, how it works, what it means for Ethereum. The reason for all the excitement is that layer two solutions such as optimism will help increase Ethereum's throughput, transactions per second, decrease latency, and greatly reduce gas fees all without losing the security of the Ethereum mainnet. The main difference between sidechain only solutions such as Polygon and XDAI and actual layer twos, sidechain solutions have their own consensus mechanism and security and do not benefit ETH layer one security while layer two solutions do. So with optimism, what happens is that when a transaction is received on the Ethereum mainnet uh, or layer one, uh, yeah, that layer one, the transaction data is stored in layer one, but the smart contract computation process is, uh, is actually processed on the child chain and the results of this computation are sent back to layer one. So I guess the computational process is actually what makes everything really slow. So it's a it, this is kind of bundled in a very, very nice image here. Uh, so this is what optimistic rollups essentially are. You have the user sending in a transaction. That transaction is put into that rollup contract and then sent to this layer two where this where the processing happens, where the where usually without this uh, rollup contract, the transaction and processing or, or mostly the processing happens here. Very, very slow. What happens with the rollup contract is that it moves into this layer two, is handled here, and then sent back into the rollup contract and then pushed out. So all this again is doing is interacting within uh, more so than a Polygon or XDAI. You're having the optimistic virtual machine be able to to handle that processing for the Ethereum mainnet, and then it's sent back. Uh, I know that there's a lot of different arbitration that he goes into here in a second. I know that's kind of a lot to take in, especially if you're a little bit new. Uh, but basically, this is going to allow Ethereum, just like, you know, 
a Polygon or an XDI to scale, uh, but also the optimistic uh, rollups are a little bit more integrated into Ethereum itself. Uh, so that was not the easiest thing to explain, but it is really, really awesome uh, to kind of see all of the different things that are happening on Ethereum. Uh, hopefully, uh, if you guys want to hit me with, with any other information, if you are privy on optimistic rollups and things like that, uh, you guys can definitely put that in the comments. That's kind of one of the benefits of doing this live. Uh, otherwise, it looks like Synthetics, Uniswap, Chainlink, Coinbase, and Compound Finance are first up once optimistic rollups start to go into effect uh, and the mainnet goes live. Um, so again, Xerox Rafi says, so what's the status of optimism adoption? For starters, Synthetics is running on a private mainnet. Uniswap ran a gamified proof of con concept called Unipig. Uh, Chainlink has also announced that it will be implementing and Coinbase Wallet adds native support for the optimism test net. So, and then we have Compound Finance there. So absolutely great, great breakdown here in the thread. I, again, that is pinned up in the chat. Hopefully you guys can take a look at that later. Uh, it is, you know, in depth, the last th two stories that I just threw out, they're not for, uh, the faint of heart or maybe new into crypto. Uh, and definitely the next one, uh, is not either. Uh, but it, it has to do with more traditional investments. This is absolutely one of the best articles that I have read maybe in six months. And you know, the last one, the last one I read six months ago was probably Arthur Hayes again. Um, so there was some news that Arthur was actually going to turn himself in. I might be able to pull up uh, that he is uh, going to turn himself in, I believe, in Bermuda. I don't I don't know exactly where that's going to take place, uh, but we do have him and a, another colleague that are going to turn themselves in. So that is the negative news. The positive news being that we have an amazing macro investment you know, strategist here. He not only is he a, a great investor, he's an absolutely phenomenal writer. So I will pin now this article as well. You have, you guys have got to read this. It is very in depth. It comes from that investor uh, standpoint, uh, but you do uh, get a lot uh, if you go back and reread it a couple times. About eight thousand words. The guy's just go getting after it here. But I'm gonna try to find basically. Um, I'm gonna try and find basically his thesis in a very, very uh, small type of, uh, um, I'm just gonna find his thesis and see if I can't um, get that to you guys. Uh, so here it is, all right? So you could read the whole thing and again, a major, major, major amount of details, uh, but basically it boils down to this. It's all about inflation. Everyone is scrambling to figure out, especially those you know in higher up places that are having to guard hundreds of millions of dollars, scrambling to figure out how does my money, my cash, my fiat not get out printed, right? How do I, how do I make sure that I am consistently not uh, getting eaten up by inflation? So I'm going to read directly from the article and definitely let me know what you guys think. Rainy, I see you. He says, hey, bro, audio was on 79 cents. What's your opinion? I will get to Audius here in a second. I uh, love what they're doing, but I can break that down a little bit more. So uh, definitely comment along, guys. Uh, I know it's, again, a bigger article, but I love to hear your guys' comments. He says, in 2021, inflation is coming. This statement is now common knowledge. Everybody knows that everybody knows that inflation will rise this, this year and into the future. As such, what will the market decide is the asset that everybody should buy to protect their portfolios in the ravages of inflation? He said he came into a meeting, uh, uh, and this was with the fund manager he meets with often. I came into the meeting with the fund manager to determine and find the answer. After our hour-long conversation, it clicked when he said, Arthur, you have the perfect barbell portfolio uh, this age. And barbell just means, in, in a sense, in a TLDR sense, it needs to be diversified a little bit. Uh, long crypto and long interest rate volatility via my fund. So he goes on to kind of say, again, 8,000 words, guys. But basically, if I had to break it down in a very succinct uh, amount of time, long crypto, and most of us here are, uh, and also long uh, government bonds uh, or, you know, pick up government bonds to you fight this, uh, fight these interest rates. And it's basically broken down here, right? The cryptocurrency complex led by Bitcoin is the best hedge against hyperinflation because it resides outside of the mainstream financial system. 
Even the best performing traditional asset will never eclipse a return to the crypto complex during a period of inflation, simply because all of the assets in the mainstream financial system are manipulated by central banks, so they do so that they do not out, output the correct inflationary warnings. If policymakers try to avoid the end game of hyperinflation, which has historically always been war or revolution, and I laugh, but I shouldn't because there are definitely tendencies that we're heading towards, uh, they will raise policy rates to push real interest rates into positive territory. That will crush asset values, uh, including crypto. In this scenario, you want to be long government bond interest rates, usually via interest rate swap, swap options. So that's the article broken down uh, in a very succinct amount of time. Long crypto, long government bonds in periods where they look to pull back, right? If again, policymakers decide to avoid hyperinflation, uh, they will raise policy rates to rush to push real interest rates into positive territory. In that scenario, you, you want to be in government bonds in some form or fashion, because that's been the most secure place uh, <coughs> uh, when that starts to starts to happen. Because that's the one thing that is not going to be affected. Even crypto markets are affected by traditional uh, traditional markets and, and those effects. Although, as you know, Arthur's saying in point number one, not as much. So I'm going to finish up here. Both scenarios <coughs> are extreme, and the actions of global policymakers must be extreme to the endogenous risk built up post World War II Bretton Woods petrodollar financial system. There will be no muddle through. It's either or, and subsequently a violent whipsaw between the two modalities. So a kind of negative look at probably the next 10 years, but a lot of us in crypto have been predicting a little bit of this. Uh, it, probably the more, I would say like the more anarchist among us are, are predicting this happening as we see more hyperinflation. What do we do? Where do we go? And right now, all Arthur's saying, long crypto, long government bonds when the, when the Fed makes extreme action. All right, so I know that was a lot. I know it's hard to get into. If you have a chance, read both or read this article, uh, but definitely get into the other article on EIP 1559. But this blog post right here, 8,000 words, uh, is is just phenomenal. He's a great writer. Uh, he's a fantastic mind. Uh, I'm going just through this to show you the length uh, of this. He goes into different assets and what you should be holding uh, with a verdict. So stocks being uh, B+. Plus, real estate being C plus fixed incomes being C and gold being gold being B plus and Bitcoin being a minus. So uh, that I'm, I'm not going to go into this much more, uh, but definitely love what's coming out from Arthur Hayes. Hopefully whatever's going on legally can be handled out. Uh, but that's that's pretty much it uh he, he put together a great blog post here check it out if you can okay oh my coins is saying rini uh loop say some may prefer 50 cents uh flint savage is saying hello deanna oh deanna pierce is in here uh he, she says hello everyone so it's great to see everybody we are i i know it was a little slow this morning popped up live and it, people are trickling in but we have about 53 of you guys in the house definitely get the word out if it's your first time here please leave a like leave a subscribe if you love what we got going on otherwise we are going to move into the next piece uh and i will talk to i will talk about audio we'll hit audio i promise all right cuban's a madman uh cuban is a madman Cuban, this is the problem with having fuck you money is that you do weird crap like this. Awesome to see. Don't get me wrong. I think, you know, partly I think his strategy here is to capitalize on Dogecoin's moves here over the past six months. If you can capitalize on the Doge rich and have them buy, you know, Mavericks memorabilia, you know, maybe that maybe, you know, that is a boon for you. Uh, interesting portion of this article that I wanted to get you guys at as we kind of break this down uh, is that they introduced Bitcoin payments and, and, and just like letting people purchase tickets or different memorabilia with Bitcoin about a year ago. They've had like $500 worth of items be bought. So that is an awesome use case, uh, but we don't see the demand there for people to spend crypto. I think that you now saying it out loud, you probably can make the argument that you uh, 
you didn't have a lot of basketball happening uh, in 2020. There was a lot of COVID situations going on, so maybe not the best year uh, to do that that test case. But we'll see. So the story again, Dallas Mavericks now accepting uh, Dogecoin as payment. Mark Cuban has said that almost no one has paid the Mavericks in Bitcoin, but will anybody pay in Doge? Uh, Mark Cuban's Dallas Mavericks are the first merchant to start accepting Doge. Uh, I'm sure they mean uh, first NBA merchant. So let me know what you guys think about this. We got we got the, the Doge coin itself figuring out what its use cases are going to be. It looks like it's making its way into the NBA. And Mark Cuban has been absolutely on a tear in crypto, man. That guy wants to know what is happening, what is on the fringe. He's been everywhere. I know he was on Bankless. He was on a couple other places talking about crypto, talking about NFTs, talking about uh, Euler Beats. So good to see from, from Cuban here. I mean, it's, it's, it, it, it's, it's, it, there's not much deepness to go into, not much depth to go into with this story, but we do have Dogecoin being accepted from the Dallas Mavericks. So maybe one day we will get Mr. Mark Cuban on. We have Dead Man streaming here in the house. He says, hey, all, I am the Modern Mango on Twitter and Rarible. Good to see you. Welcome into Layer 1 Live. Welcome into Lad City. Love to see it. Happy Friday, everybody. Let me get an R Vibe R Tribe in the house, man. Let me get an R Vibe R Tribe. I'm dropping some lads for you later in the episode. Cannot wait to do so. I want to see those R Vibes, R Tribes. Give me some energy here. I need to feel it. It is a wonderful Friday. We're all in crypto, changing the world. And I would love to get a little bit more energy in that chat. Overman saying Mark Cuban is cool. He's willing to take the risks. Someone big has to take the first steps to mass adoption. True. Brian Zator, Doge as payment. LOL, that's funny. Maybe Doge will pump hard now. Up 2% on the call. Up 2%. The Dallas Mavericks percentage change. The pump. That's what I love to see. Look at that. Look at that. Wake up those Twitter fingers. Love the R vibes. Appreciate it. You guys are making me blush here. All right. Easy and Crypto saying, let's get this hype. Big things going down. I would love to hear what you guys are working on too. I know Easy's got a lot of things happening with him uh, from a personal standpoint. He's doing a lot of things in Lad City, but also going out into the crypto sphere and, and getting after it there. So if you've got anything going on in, in your day to day, just drop it in the chat, man. Drop it in Discord. Drop it in Lad City. Otherwise, we will move on to quick news here. All right. So I listen. I had I had CZ. On the thumbnail. Oh, Randy really wants me to talk about Audius. I will get to it after this Binance news. I had Binance on the thumbnail. I was showing a little bit about CZ. Not saying that I'm completely off the Binance Smart Chain train, but it was only a matter of time till Binance eventually found some FUD. Eventually found some like negative sentiment. Because it had been that that's just if you've been in the space since 2016 and since Binance has been around. It almost was surprising how like much the positive sentiment was building up on Binance. First major rug pull. So it looks like this rug pull comes from Meerkat Finance. Hell of a name, by the way. Love me some Meerkats. $30 million worth of BUSD and BNB drained. It looks like they came out initially and said, hey, you know, something is happening with the with the protocol. We're being, you know, hacked. And then dead silence from the dev team. A lot of people thinking that they possibly ran off with this money. So I'm going to read directly from the article here. Binance Smart Chain has become somewhat of a hot topic. Yeah, we know that. Networks saw an influx of new projects reminiscing of the early days of DeFi craziness. In any case, hours ago, and this article came on March 4th, so yesterday... Hours ago, the community was shocked earlier today when news broke out that one of the newer protocols, Meerkat Finance, was drained. Meerkat Finance, a, year fa- year, blah, 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 a yield farming protocol that runs on BSC. Team revealed it was hacked, drained, 13 mil USD, and then some more BNB as well, roughly over 30 mil.
This is it. CZ, roll it back. CZ, roll it back. That's what they're saying, right? We got 21 validators, of which Binance is mostly a part of those. Roll it back. Save the people. Funds are not safe food. Funds are not safe food. Looks like Binance Chain community is looking to gather information. They're going to put out one of those cyberpunk wanted posters for these guys. 1,000 BNB for the heads. I th Overman saying, I love a good rug pull story, though. Terrible. I, listen, I've gotten rugged a couple times just like aping into a couple projects. It happens. I, I'm not necessarily saying that I don't like to talk about these stories because they're interesting. It's like watching a car crash almost. You can't like you can't look away. So, Meerkat Finance getting rug pulled 30 mil. All right, the last Binance smart chain story here. Another negative sentiment type piece here. Binance smart chain musical beats alleged Ethereum copycat shuts down days after launch. So we were talking about... <laughs> We were talking about the move of a lot of these projects to basically copy exactly what is happening on Ethereum as we have Flint Savage say, Ethereum forever. So musical beats basically copied Euler beats from Ethereum almost to the T, right? Uh, I'll try and go into this and, and show you maybe a tweet almost to a t we have a copy so you see the oiler beats there they've raised it they that platform has done a lot in sales they had i believe like 27 specific art pieces and we have musical beats here so this brings up a couple different things there's a major conversation around ip around open source what should be open source what does open source even mean we're in a decentralized world in to I'm not a lawyer, and I know for a fact that there are some caveats. I was I was listening, you know, I was I was listening to a couple of people talk about this as well uh, as reading later in this article, talking about these different IPs and how open source works relative to you know the legal standing people have. Because we have Matt Corva from Euler Beats saying the irony of BSC literally copying pasting Ethereum's NFT projects designed to help creators retain rights is not lost on me. We will aggressively look into any and all actions against this ripoff and any who assist them in infringing on our copyright. To me, I lean with Matt here, but I'm gonna I'm probably gonna be on the fence a little bit more than Matt himself. Obviously, he has, is at Euler Beats. To me, it's decentralized until it infringes on what you're doing. And infringes on your life and then you want the centralized aspect to come in that's my biggest problem with a lot of these things people preach the decentralized the decentralization the the open source all of this ethos and then when it infringes upon you it happens on binance as well from the exchange standpoint people investing in decentralized products oh this is this is amazing this is the new paradigm you know, we're going to get rid of centralized platforms as you trade on one. But then when you lose funds, when you lose funds, you want it to be taken care of. When someone rips you off, you want it to be centralized. That's my biggest problem with this. And from a personal standpoint, I probably act the same way. If someone really screwed me up and there was a way to try to get my funds back or try to figure it out, I probably would do the same thing, but from the outside looking in objectively, you, these people, it, it, he's talking about it being ironic. Well, your tweet's a little bit ironic. So this conversation is only going to be, ha be uh, you know, had more. As more and more, you know, usable dApps come into the ecosystems, as more and more quote unquote normies come into the ecosystem, they're going to expect a lot of different centralized features, including copyright infringement. So I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts here, man. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts. I probably, I would agree 
with Overman here. Binance Chain just doing what China uh, China does. Uh, fake Apple stores, etc. They don't really care about IP. That's Western values to them. Agreed. You've seen that over and over. China is really good at efficiency. At breaking down, essentially, into small pieces what the West does and making it efficient from a production standpoint. So, I completely agree. This is exactly what China does. At least in mass, right? There are a lot of Chinese individuals, and that's not to say that's even a negative thing. If you can take what someone's done doing and be more efficient with it, by all means do it. That's free market. That's the difference. It's free market until until it's not. Right? Until you want it to be changed. So awesome love to get the comments out here again i did have cz i was shilling binance there have been bash mass there have been a couple others overall from a sentiment standpoint i think that this is a little bit negative though for binance i think they were doing really good things i think this consistent i don't think CZ, this is not coming from cz or anything i doubt they're trying to back these projects I'm sure that they'll probably make some type of wall in the future. But how do you make a wall? I just talked about a wall. <laughs> There's the That's the point. I want to slap myself. But if they don't want this to happen, they have to set up a gate, right? Eldin is coming in with a, the, a great comment. All's fair in love and crypto war. Couldn't have said it better myself. All right, I'm going to go back to some of these comments before I move on uh, and continue talking about CZ, and then we'll hit Audius. James Jafal saying, is LADS token listed? LADS is on Uniswap. Easy's talking about meme force competitions. I love that. Deadman saying, minting some new NFTs today. Join our Discord. Join LADS.city, L-A-D-Z dot city in your browser. It'll take you right to our Discord. Show it off. Getting some wax love here. Overman saying Binance is Tron, but better. I would probably agree with that. One inch, so strong. Carrots is saying, so who is starting up the Layer 1 Crypto Network channel? Spelled differently. Listen, that that would be a scenario. I'd ring up whoever the hell owns YouTube and be like, please, sir. Google headquarters. They're copying me and they probably get it done. Chris Tuttle saying, anyone read the article on geeks, mops, and sociopaths as it relates to the evolution and monetization of a culture? Definitely drop that link. Drop. Uh, you're not able to drop the links into uh, the actual chat here, but you're able to drop the links uh, in Lad City. So lads.city, you can drop the links there. All right, so I'm going to finish up here. The Again, Binance dealing with a lot of, uh, I guess, blowback uh, from the, the copycats that are happening on Ethereum. And while I do agree in the ethos of all is fair in love and crypto war, it's not a good look when you have a lot of these people kind of uh, feeling like they're getting screwed over. It is interesting, then, the last one I'll make is that if you get to a point and they had some people kind of talk through in this article. And one of the women who was talking here, I actually agreed with a lot. I don't know if I can. Uh, Maria here, Hernandez. Because they're talking about Pancake Swap. Pancake was a, was a fork of Uniswap. Sushi Swap was a fork of Uniswap. It's almost like if you get to a point of legitimization, if you get to a point of legitimization, everything's cool. But if you don't get to that point, and you look like a complete a complete copycat, then people are going to be upset. So Maria is over here saying, and she's the founder of ETH Berlin, that, that hackathon and conference, argues that PancakeSwap has evolved enough, quote unquote, there it is, that it can be considered a decent and old-fashioned fork. So as long as you're a good fork, as long as you're successful, you can copy-paste. But she's less sanguine. That's an interesting term they use there about Binance punks. Binance punks are simply an attempt to deceive people in accessing punks. Well, what would it have been, what what would it have been if it was super successful? That's the difference. So, really really cool discussion to be had around copycats.
I haven't even used pancake swap yet. I, you know, I was involved in bakery swap. That was relatively interesting, but I'll, I'll, I'll move on. I'll move on. Cause I'm, we're spending a lot of time here. Great to see everybody here on, on layer one live. Uh, we're breaking down the crypto industry. If it's your first time here, please leave a like, please leave a subscribe comment in that comment section. It's blowing up right now. Thank you guys so much. Hayden Adams. This is the last point. Hayden Adams was upset at the sushi swap fork. One of the biggest decentralized protocols in existence, DEXs, in existence, was upset at a fork of it, you know. But now SushiSwap is one of the best, you know, decentralized exchanges out there and they're continuing to innovate. Where do you draw the line? So, love that discussion, man. Can, I'm, because we're talking about sushi, I'm just going to skip a couple down. I'll go back to it. Um, RIP my quick bags, man. RIP my quick bags. Let me see if I can't get to quick here. So I've been chilling quick and I do own quick. I just said I had bags. I've been chilling quick, which is another fork. Uh, they're basically the Uni Uniswap on Polygon, who's seen a tremendous amount of migrations. Avagachi, I mean, quick swap should literally be bowing at the feet of Avagachi for what they did for their their exchange here. RIP my bags, man. Let's see. Seven days. I think we got up to about 550. And then we got this announcement. So again, AMM, one of the only decentralized exchanges on Polygon. Polygon's growing. And then we had this. Sushi is going multi-chain. We have deployed the Sushi contracts of these networks. Phantom, Polygon, XDAI, Binance, and Moonbeam. If, if I had seen this immediately, I would have gone onto the Matic network, the Polygon network. I don't know why I keep doing that. And immediately flipped my stuff. The problem was I saw the tweet a couple hours late, checked my portfolio. <sighs> Wasn't good. Down 23% on seven days. Again, we were up at like 560. This is the announcement here. You see it? All right, 500. Maybe this is like, you know, kind of built in people hearing about it through the grapevine, hearing about it through the grapevine, through the grapevine, through the grapevine, announced, boom, 366. So, RIP, 100%. Still holding those bags. Uh, I think we see a good little, we've seen a good little bounce, but uh, we'll see where that goes. But uh, to the story and less about my personal uh, situation here. Sushi is going multi-chain and I'm sure Sushi has seen the opposite of what's happened to my quick bags. Let's see what's going on with Sushi here. Down 4%. This is like industry standard right now. I feel like we're ranging a little bit. Uh, let's, let's zoom out for all the haters though. $2 December 6th kind of ranging great to see adding different supports adding you know dex capabilities here uh, to all those chains so good to see there that's basically that news and then we also have another piece of news quickly from polygon a lot of the movement they're making is uh in the nft space so we have atari moving over so the atari token available on polygon on quick swap likely on sushi now Rainy saying dope beats in the background, by the way. D yeah, speaking of dope beats, I'm going to Audius, I promise. I'm getting a lot of wax comments. All right, I'm, I'm getting back getting back into the comments here. Yeah, Easy saying, you know, sh show some respect to OG projects. I, I could I could see that there's there's a reputational aspect. This is a community. You should show a little bit more respect to these projects. The, the I guess it's just a, it's a, it is a gray area. That is the only kind of I think that's where people kind of trip over themselves a little bit. It's, it is a gray area. Where does it where does it stop? Where does it begin? But it should be a feel thing. And a lot of the Binance projects it didn't feel right. Easy and Crypto says make some 
little alterations instead of just copy pasting. Oh, my coins is saying, Chris Tuttle, thank you for the recommendation. Going to add it into the Arthur Hayes read. All right, let's get let's get some help for Nikhil here. Nikhil saying, how do you know which Top Shot moment to buy and hold for future value? Any help doing research? Research. I've got a lot of Top Shot guys in the chat that they can help you out. Please, let's help some Nikhil out while I move on. Yeah, Easy's commenting on that sushi. Yeah, the original sushi rug pull. That's fair. James is saying, Q, get a bag of wax, please. Check the graph and the new IP coming to the chain. We we have we've had multiple calls with Wax, with the Wax team. Shout out to Jassy. Shout out to Lee from that team. We had them on sale day for Street Fighter. We're gonna be working closely with Wax as we go forward. And I do have a bag of wax. I do have about I, I think I have about a hundred K uh wax so and that's just you know from putting in some usd and, and flipping man i've had a great time flipping wax with you guys overman saying there's a gap in the market for collating and releasing information before it hits the mass market you don't get to know unless you're in the telegram discord 24 7 fair yep there's outsized returns when it comes to a lot of these uh, as you make yourself, you know, more known or as you make the rest of the market more known to yourself. For example, if you go, there's not much, I feel like insider information when it comes to Bitcoin right now. But as you go farther and farther down the rabbit hole, there's, there's some good inside information. Not investment advice. Don't do a damn thing I say when it comes to investing. I was just saying, crypto is full time if you want to stay ahead of the sheeple. <laughs> that you need to give that Arthur Hayes thread uh, a read. You guys have to do it. It's pinned. You have to. Brian Zator saying, "I buy something and the next day I have like ten more than I spent." That is the crypto meme, isn't it? All right, so we got about 55 of you guys in the house. Thank you for showing up today. We are moving on. I will, I'll touch on Audius a little bit. So fundamentally, uh, and they put this out via their Twitter a little while ago, as we can see, 30 days, up 200% on 30 days. Great, great buy. I, I think I bought, before Ethereum pumped, I was big into Audius. Um, I do have a bag of Audius. Uh, but it was a... My... my uh, my opportunity cost is not good on this trade because I bought uh, about 10 ETH worth when it when ETH was like, what, 300 bucks. And it was, it was sitting about this price, right? I think it was like 40. Let's, so let's go back. We can retrace the land of Q uh, here. Let's see. So we got 180 days. I think it got up to, huh. I think I bought Audius before it hit CoinGecko, and it was like at a 40 cent. So I think my initial price, my price entry was like at 40 cents. Um, but we can see that it's gone past there. I'm not doing too well still on that trade. If I look to go make that swap there, probably would not be returning much. But it's good to see. And from the standpoint of their user, uh, their usership, we can we can hit this. They probably have this somewhere, huh? Mm, if I don't find it here in the next couple, here we go. So 3 million users visiting their website in the past month, using the platform in the past month, it looks like. Wow, 3 million monthly active users. Thanks to Audius fan for being part of this major milestone. I like the, I like the fundamentals on this one. You're trying to be a uh, tokenized spot, uh, Spotify. Uh, obviously we have a social token so we're big into the creator economy so obviously i'm going to be a big proponent of projects like audius i know cooper turley's involved with this project want to give him a quick shout out he's he's great so it, as far as you know what we can do uh with audius uh they'll probably roll out a lot more based on i think cooper is heading up that the, t the tokenomics there so they'll probably be rewarding their users from a token perspective over and over again because that's what we've seen 
uh, from the DeFi space, from the NFT space. I, I like Audius. All right, I'm going to go back. It looks like we're giving some advice here. Just buy Top Shot Rookies. Agreed with that. So I sold a legendary or whatever. I don't even remember. I sold a legendary Carl Anthony Towns like back in the day. It's like a $600 sale for me. I thought I was a genius. That thing probably goes for 25 now. Like one of those gold cards. So I haven't really been one. I will say I love flow. I love what they're doing. It's before flow and after flow when it comes to NFT adoption. See if I can pull up Crypto Slam and see what they're doing. Down day, up day. I'm sure it's a big up day for them since they just had that. Oh, down day. <laughs> Guys, only 4 million in secondary market sales for Top Shot in 24 hours. Down day for these guys. So this would have been good for like a year in 2019. Crypto Landa says, sorry, bro, late, got to replay this after. No worries. We did start kind of slow today. I don't know what that was. Got some Bitcoin origins talk. We're going to get to NFTs, guys. I'm going to I'm gonna try to stay on schedule here. We talked some Binance. We talked uh, Arthur Hayes. Ethereum's EIP 1559 got passed. Optimistic roll-ups on their way. A lot of bullishness from the Ethereum community. In, in my opinion, not financial advice, EIP 1559, you got, again, optimism on its way. Only needs to be, ETH, ETH only needs to be nudged in a certain direction, and it just starts to fly. Market's down for maintenance and drops. So the market was completely down. Completely down. And it's still the number one secondary market sales in NFTs. All right, I'm going to fly through these next pieces of news. Keep the comments coming. I will get to them. I saw some Bitcoin origins. Easy's got a business call. He needs to hop on. Good luck, my brother. All right. Bison Trails launching staking and node services. Pretty straightforward here. Again, Bison Trails staking infrastructure project uh, that was bought up by Coinbase a little while ago, they're announcing support for Cosmos. This is basically the scenario here. All of these large exchanges, and one of the reasons why Coinbase acquired Bison Trails, want to get staking services for the people on their platform. If you can leave Cosmos on Coinbase and still get the yield from these staking services, you're going to likely leave it on Coinbase rather than not receiving those and maybe going somewhere else. Maybe chasing a, a CFI lending yield from you know celsius or something like that so bison trails offering support of the cosmos ecosystem a lot more information down here as it relates to that but good to see this is a little bit under the radar one of the bigger projects that i've seen have a slashing event kava halted after yield farming bug discovered in latest release they had to restart the kava chain so the security committee for Kava Labs, the company behind a new generation DeFi platform, has halted the chain to address an inflation bug that overdistributes yield farming rewards in its release. So this update, Kava 5, had some type of bug in it that was over, somebody was yield farming, someone was putting in a hard day's work on the farm and receiving more yield than they should have. So what they're doing is reverting back to four and then upgrading to six. If you're following me there. So it looks like Masari did a lot. Funds are safe. Masari did a lot of uh, reporting here. According to Masari, the high severity bug was paying out liquidity providers on the platform well above expected values. These specific payouts are time locked, the post explains, so they could not be sent to exchanges, just claimed by users. So a little bit of interesting electrifying stuff happening here uh, with Kava. I've liked what they're doing. We had Brian Kerr. We had uh, another individual as well from Kava on the podcast. Great to see. Uh, 
great to see their growth, but tough to see what they've got going on from a from a, a chain freeze here, basically, where they're having to revert an upgrade. Okay, Kings of Leon release NFT album on OpenSea. I did see that, Asmodai. I I almost specifically wasn't gonna cover that. I feel like it didn't get a lot of buzz. Maybe that's because it was on OpenSea. What if I told you Kings of Leon wasn't the top? Has anyone had any luck actually getting money out of Top Shot Prison? I put it in a request for withdrawals three to four weeks ago and it had silence. Carrots said that. Only a down day. Oh yeah, okay. Um, all right, so that is a that is an interesting piece that we'll touch on later in a little bit when we get to NFTs. But when I took part in the Ben Morrow drop, so the Ben Morrow drop happened. You think he raised like two million? It was like a collectible pack series, uh, one of the first on the Vibe marketplace, which is like Open C for for Flow. I didn't know until it actually hit, uh, like the the day actually came and we bought the cards, you weren't receiving the cards for two weeks. So, that's interesting. So there, there, there's definitely some things going on with Flow that they're working through. I think they're being really stringent from a regulatory perspective. Yeah. Easy saying, I, claiming first audio album wasn't really true. Do some research when entering the space, big artist. True. Fresco's saying, I've taken out about 27K so far, lads. I'm not, I, maybe I missed his comment earlier. What is that referring to? 27K. James Jafal saying, just came across Crypto Weaves on OpenSea. And Asmodai saying, Leon, not top, but it is more mainstream media coverage of NFTs. Yeah, definitely. I know, uh, I know Dimitri uh, as well. The, you know, R.I.P. the Beard. Uh, he's in Top Shot as well and was able to actually get some funds out. We got a Top Shot whale here, 27k Fresco. Good job, man. It's great to see everybody's success, man. In the NFT space, I love seeing all the drops that are happening in the NFT district in the DeFi district and how that plays back into what we're doing with lads. I did have a comment earlier. I don't remember exactly who, but I would love a ping like uh, to one, you know, two minutes before the NBA Top Shot packs, you know, the line starts, the queue starts, because I was creating the thumbnail for this episode. Once you post that, it feels so good, but it was at 12.02. I missed out. So. All right. Uh, Carrots is saying, uh, oh, oh, Young Content got two rare packs. My man. I tried to get the legendary. Then I went, I should have went for rare. That's, the, you can try your hand at getting the best packs. This is an NFT alpha, but usually, like this is one thing I do with Blankos is if there is a top Blanco, don't go for that one race go there you know purchase but don't go for the best one because you might get the mint one of the second best just just my opinion so that's what that's what young content did i went for the legendary there were only about 10 of those got stuck then i tried to go for the rares didn't get that so i had to get i, I got stuck with some commons i know uh orlando's there with me he's getting one of those commons as well uh definitely interesting and we will keep you guys up to date on the returns on on that yeah perm does saying if you didn't manage to get a card and want to withdraw your flow from vibe you got to mail them about it yeah there is an email there line opens up 10 minutes before that's good to know okay 62 of you guys in the house i'm gonna hit the quick news and then we will flow into nfts keep the comments coming nvidia apparently this is a very interesting electrifying story 
here that we have because it started in 2017. So the the lawsuit that is, is happening through investors uh, that are coming at NVIDIA essentially is saying that they didn't disclose, NVIDIA themselves did not disclose how large their crypto mining business was back in 2017. So the I believe what happened here is NVIDIA stock price shot up 2017 but like the rest of the crypto market like the ico market and like the bitcoin market that they were fueling with a lot of their mining cards when it crashed the stock price crashed and i'm sure a lot of nvidia investors were hurt well they actually took them to court investors took nvidia to court and it was found that they did not have they weren't like to be liable uh the judge concluded that investors evidence was not convincing the investors were claiming that uh, NVIDIA misled them by failing to disclose the size of its crypto mining business. So I had no idea that this was an ongoing legal dispute, maybe by design, uh, but I'm sure some investors were hurt uh, when the crypto markets pulled back and NVIDIA therefore had a pullback in their stock. And that is that. That is the quick news story. Uh, oh, my coin is saying mail. Does nobody use a fax machine anymore? I think so. It was an email. It was email. Katsumoto said they're they're adding 2FA and automatic withdrawal soon. Woo. Q, did you hear about the NBA Top Shot Fantasy M? I heard about Swish. I did hear about Swish. getting a lot of good comments here in the chat appreciate you guys so the vibe marketplace is has their own wallet by the way so you can uh you can receive flow from anyone uh but you have to go through those processes but their vibe marketplace is live they have their own wallet you just send and receive uh flow from anybody brian stores says, how does the crypto kitties and top shots cool cats work uh that, that's an interesting that, that's gonna be a lot to break down uh carrots say hmm, not sure cancel my okay so we will move on guys we got about 55 in the house the last piece of quick news FTX, so Sam Bankman Fried, FTX CEO Sam Bankman Fried, ranked as second biggest blockchain billionaire. Let's talk, and this is a cool, this is a cool article because it's showing basically the holdings, the the cat the basically the net worth of a lot of individuals in crypto, outside of crypto. Apparently, CZ is number three, not doing as well as his friends Sam Bankman Fried, as well as the guy we've talked about. I'll let you guess before I, you know, say it. Maybe you maybe you read it. Brian Armstrong. Brian Armstrong coming in at number one. So we have a list here. Let's see if I can't get it. I might be able to, to log in here. Can we get there? Net worth in billions, guys. So we're again big boys, big whales here. Net worth in billions. Let's go down the list. Brian Armstrong, eleven point five. Sam Bankman. 10 million. CZ, 8. Chris Larson, 5. Jed McCaleb, 3. The Winklevi. Tim Draper at 1.9, coming in at 12. Novogratz, coming in at 14. And then Brad Garlinghouse there. So Ripple is definitely paying out. Did, uh, did you guys have any family members reach out for Ripple this week? Let me know in the chat. Among traditional, those not fully in the crypto realm, billionaires, electric car uh, giant Tesla CEO Elon Musk took the lead. Uh-oh. Is my uh, is my stream coming through, guys? Hopefully, I'm coming through all right. I, I just had an error on my end. Uh, yeah, so Ripple is doing super well. Uh, Carrots is saying, "Holy crap, the Ripple crew!" 
Dirty CZ. I had an issue, but it looks like it's fixed. Uh, all right. So here's the situation. Uh, these are rich ass mofos. So we have Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, and Bernard Arnault, chairman and chief executive of Luxury Goods uh, and Louis Vuitton. We have an interesting, que electrifying question uh, in chat. Tom Tom saying, "Is it still worth getting in on Crypto Kitties, or are they dying out?" I had this on the thumbnail for NFT Live. We didn't ever get to it. We had a ton of technical issues. Crypto Kitties might be having a comeback here. I haven't looked at any of the the like analytics as far as you know kitty prices or anything like that. But from what we're hearing within the NFT space, there are a ton of movements with Crypto Kitties happening as they're looking to move to flow. Don't know what that means in full, but we'll, we will see uh, as we go forward what that means. Okay, we are officially in the NFT part portion of the episode, guys. So definitely, uh, as we go forward, uh, keep me up to date on everything as far as the NFT space is concerned. Thank you guys for clarifying that everything is good. We will hit NFT. So I am going to hit some general market overviews of NFTs right now. Native tokens of NFT projects are shooting up in value. The latest NFT boom is rubbing off on several blockchain projects, giving a huge boost to their native tokens. This was on March 4th. And I'm going to go down to this. I, oh, didn't have. I thought this one had... I thought that one had an image, but we definitely, I believe DCL Blogger came through. That was it. So I've added an image here from DCL Blogger. It's NFT season. So we see some of the biggest tokens here in the NFT space. Over a 24 hour period, a lot is going in to these native protocol tokens. Flow, Mana, Sand, Axie, Engine. Axie specifically, man, 100%. There was a DAO that formed uh, via the community as well, Yield Wars Guild, I believe. They got investment up to like 1.5 million, and they're going to be placing that in different, uh, different NFT projects and things like that. So basically, think of like a DAO investment fund. So DCL's chilling these tokens here. I believe if I can get to the article, there's a couple others that were mentioned in this decrypt article. Chili's the central land was talked about flow was talked about. So just an overall movement into NFT protocol tokens. And, and here's, here's what I want to throw out to you guys. Love the comments coming through. I want to throw out the question of whether it's better to invest in these protocol tokens or is it better to invest in the actual assets on those protocols? What's your thesis there? There are a lot of people that come and go and say, hey, I want to collect on uh, the assets on these networks. I think there's a better return. A little bit more risk, especially if the movement so I'll give you an example. When we were talking about getting some of this Ben Morrow drop and you're spending flow, you're actually, you know, you have to take that opportunity cost. You have to say, okay, I spent 10 flow here, but wait, flow is going up in price. So in boom times, in, in bear, I mean, in bull cycles, you have that opportunity cost loss. You know, in store value a little bit more, probably in a bear cycle. NFTs might be seen as a store value. They might hold. But in, in a bull cycle, when flow is running 100% in, in a seven-day period, it might not be as valuable to you to try to use those tokens to buy in into these projects. We've seen it with WAX, but not so much, I feel like, uh, on, that, on that platform, on that protocol. Because you'll, you'll get into a project like Street Fighter. Wax has done pretty well. Let's see if we can't pull it up. But the flipping on Wax makes it so 
you don't really feel bad to get that exposure over the period of what? The days that you're flipping it. So it's ranging a little bit. So I'm going to hit these comments here. Looks like some good ones are coming through. Can we buy lads or can they only be gifted? I'm trying to get in on the 5,000 lads on Discord. I'll let the community handle that question. We have a lot of good community members. This is nothing is investment advice on this channel, but we have lads uh, that can help you with that question. So please, uh, guys in the comments who have been faithful and loyal and, and noble and guardian and recruit lads, let TomTom Tom know exactly what needs to happen uh, from that perspective. Chris Tuttle saying investing in the tokens, in my opinion, but buy the NFTs. I do protocols seem safer. That I think that is the thesis, uh, as well as trying both out. Maybe you you know diversifying is not. It, it, I think most people are in the in probably the mode of hey I want to do both. If I'm in Decentraland, maybe Decentraland's not the best because their marketplace isn't as built out and liquid. But if I'm using Wax, for example, I think most people will say I'm going to take a percentage and leave it in wax and i'm going to use a little bit to flip these assets or collect these assets it just depends at that point what percentage are you, you going to brian zator is saying i used to have lads i will make sure that you get taken care of my sir i know we had some issues with with quote unquote hacks happening we didn't get much information uh from from the bosses on that one don't want to see any lads out in the in the cold. Carrots probably is mirroring my sentiment here. I suspect higher upside with assets, but need to be really involved in the projects. Safer to go with the underlying tokens. James is saying tokens 90% and 10% high-end assets for me. Eldin is, is mirroring my point as well. Assets seem to be higher returns, but giving up all that flow was painful. Yeah, I think what you well, I think what everyone's getting at here is if you have a token that's pretty much parabolic, it's probably better to stay over with the token again, not investment advice with the overarching token. So, all right, guys, good to see everybody in the house. We got fifty five of you guys here, touching on wax. We're hitting NFTs, touching native tokens versus the assets. Uh, speaking of a native token that's done really well and has some interesting tokenomics. Left House Crypto saying Uplift World coming with Lads Land. That is going to be an announcement that's pretty big. Can't wait to get that to you guys. Shout out to Asmodai. Shout out to Small Town Cowboy who are working on our plot and Uplift Land. Spike in digital land and NFT sales push Axie Infinity price to new highs. Axie is absolutely killing it. Let me make sure that I don't lose this. I'm pretty sure I sold Axie at like 120 thinking I was a genius. Shout out to the Crypto Buffalo and me who did not catch this ride. Pour one out for us, guys. Probably that 30 day timeline. Yeah, that 95. Interesting things happening with Axie. Primarily around... Primarily around uh, what they're doing with their land. Uh, they're moving more into, towards Ronin. So I'll look to get a little bit of information here. But if you want to get most of the information, it's going to be via Axie's Twitter. But they're basically moving towards Ronin. They're moving more towards their PvP and going live there. They've got interesting projects like Yield Guild that are popping up within their community. And maybe I'm going out on a limb here, but I think Axie is going to be one of the most successful NFT projects over time from an indie perspective. So there's some tokenomics here that if you are staking, you get rewards. So people that are... You, that are using the game uh, or purchasing assets within their own marketplace. A percentage of that goes to the treasury. The treasury pays out to stakers. Easy peasy. 
Had some large land sales. Some other things going on here. See if we can't go to there. Jiho's been tweeting about it. Jiho's awesome. Shout out to my man Jiho. There's a couple things I really want to hit here. But it's easier with context. I don't know if I'm going to get it. Uh, I might be able to pull up the yield farming here. I am really want to get this information to you guys. Apologies for the delay. Guys are absolutely killing the comments, man. Appreciate it. All right, so this is one of the developments here. You Yield Guild Games lets players earn income from NFT games. So basically what we have again here is a basically an investment firm DAO. Yield Guild Games, which has raised 1.325 mil is a pool of 2,500 people who believe in the play-to-earn model that rewards gamers for playing games. The group is known as a DAO, and its investors and players own it. It takes money from investors and earned by players and reinvests it into game assets and virtual land. Javier, coming through. Thank you so much. Wow. Wow. Javier is coming through with the 20. Can you uh, excuse my absolute ignorance? I can't even tell if that's Euro or, or not. Thank you so much for the donation, Javier. Every donation that we get is going back into creating a better experience. We're getting Ronin a green screen. Needs a new light. What what doesn't Ronan need at this point from from a mechanical perspective? So Eldin saying great insights from all. Thank you. No investment advice taken. Javier saying, hey, I've been trying to follow the channel as much as I can. I don't understand how this channel still has so little followers. Great place to jump into. Great atmosphere. Shout out to my man, Javier. It's a pound. Got it. Maybe, listen. I appreciate the, uh, the, the 20 pounds, man. Thank you so much. That is the American ignorance shining through, as we say. Carrots is saying, I think it's phenomenal that some folks in developing nations can earn better than a national minimum wage playing Axie games. That is the thesis, right? Play to earn model. That is going to inc only increase as we continue to make NFT games. Games are on the horizon, man. This whole movement, this whole, all this energy around nfts is primarily focused at collectibles it's primarily focused at art no mention of games other than indie games like axi see a blankos here and there nft gaming in my opinion will be better not better but bigger than both of those markets combined art and collectibles it's going to be amazing as when i was saying shout out to the uk lads Absolutely. Shout out to all you guys and shout out again to Javier. Thank you for the 20 pounds, my man. I appreciate you stopping by here today. I appreciate your donation to the channel very much. Thank you so much. Okay, we are moving on. Steve Aoki is dropping on Nifty Gateway. Who isn't dropping on Nifty Gateway these days, man? Nifty's absolutely killing it. So Steve Aoki is... This is happening on Sunday. I'll get you guys a schedule here in a second. Uh, we have this drop. This is an audio drop as well as a visual drop. This, you know, a lot of this is kind of the narrative that's moving into crypto right or in NFTs right now. I think 
uh, Fuocious' drop later today is going to be an audio visual NFT as well. So we got a little bit of Steve's. I don't even know if I'm looking the right way. And you get the, I think you get the drop here. Classic Steve drop. go to nifty gateways twitter here and show you guys the schedule of what's coming up because it looks like few is up next here tonight we got friday march 5th fuocious paradism odious and jonathan wolf uh, and then we have steve aoki here on sunday at 2 p.m eastern let me know your guys success on, on nifty gateway that's another one man that's an absolutely large and blowing up platform here that we have uh, if anyone's taking part, I know Ronan's done that a couple times and had some success with some drops. So, great to see. If anyone can point me in the direction of whatever like, template schedule this is, I'd love to use this for lats because I've seen the exact same template on Whale Shark. I don't know if that, that means it's like an out of the box, someone just created a template that people can just plug and play. Or if these guys just like literally just copied each other because it's the exact same and it's a really cool tool. If I could just plug and play what we're doing each week, that would be great. So if anybody knows anything about these schedule templates, that would be amazing. Uh, the last bit, man, I didn't touch on this. There's a lot of clubhouse talk. I know this wasn't part of earlier. Uh, maybe this is more lads related. But we were actually, I was able to get us a shout out on Business Insider. So I had Margo McCall reach out after we hosted that clubhouse. That's such a clubhouse story. Like host our first lads clubhouse, get somebody in your DMs asking you about NFTs in clubhouse, which has been a story in and of itself. But she actually published a clubhouse uh, and NFT uh, piece here. So you got Business Insider. Clubhouse is at the heart of the revolution over non-fungible tokens and led to a buyer beware situation. And here in the comments, we have the Lads Crypto Network, huh? We made it. Mama, we made it. Right there, Business Insider, Lads Crypto Network. Guys, we're famous. So I have that on my Twitter. I have like a piece here. Uh, but basically the comments were directed towards, Hey, you know, what's, what's the, I guess, what's the role of clubhouse within NFTs adoption, which I loved that she was taking a, you know, a good approach here with trying to figure out what all this means with all the NFT rooms that are happening in clubhouse. So basically, uh, you know, if you guys want to check that out, I've got that on my Twitter, at least a, a portion there. That mentions lads and what we were doing hosting that clubhouse. But clubhouse has been amazing, man. I, I'd be, I would be completely remiss if I didn't mention that nobody in in the Twitter sphere, the Twitter OGs, anything like that, knew that that was going to happen. We all thought it was going to happen on Twitter. When the wave came, it was going to happen through Twitter, and there are a lot of people that took the bull by the horns when it comes to clubhouse and are now NFT thought influencers because they took advantage of Clubhouse, even though maybe they came to crypto as little as two weeks ago. All right, so we've got that Aoki drop, and then I'm going to touch quickly here before we move into Polkadot and end the episode here. Awesome episode, guys. F1 Delta moving to flow releasing some tr some rare tracks as well as uh, i believe they have their key sale here up until march 13th so f1 delta shout out to yacht I, I i don't know how to I'm, I'm practicing guys sue i'm trying so f1 delta moving to flow
looks like they're doing a ton of good things. All right, that is the NFT section. I want to make sure that I'm flowing through this episode. Leave some comments as far as what you got going on. I know DeFi is not, you know, NFTs are having its time in the sun, however long that that lasts. But we will hit on DeFi, specifically Polkadot. That was always one that I wanted to look at. Polkadot was branding itself, maybe not so much as an Ethereum killer, although, you know, maybe it was. Obviously, Gavin and, and the team over there are doing a good job with Substrate and being able to have this scalability. So, this this Dex right here, Pokedex, Dex built for Web3, raises $3 million from CMS, Outlier Ventures, and OKX. I mean, it's a who's who of, of people that are getting in on this. Look at this. Look at this lineup of $3 mil. really cool project here pokedex offers the functionality and performance of a centralized exchange but with better user experience fully decentralized security and technological advancements no other decks have achieved some of these achievements are on-chain market making perpetual liquidity mining and fee-less transactions which eliminate front running of all gas fees associated with existing exchanges there's a sale for this i believe end of 2021 i might be able to find this okay pokedex will distribute its erc20 token pdex through an initial token offering in the first half of 2021 so guys what we have here is a decentralized exchange on polkadot i don't know and i you know forgive me if i don't have the experience within the polkadot ecosystem i'd love to have a lad be really really involved in the polkadot ecosystem but this could be a big one not investment or financial advice they are launching this pdex token that's going to be associated with their decks and as polka dot grows out it's a pretty simple thesis more dApps, more tokens it's the it's the it's the quick swap thesis on on polygon looks like some nice backers as well so pokedex is coming out compound is using a cross-chain borrowing system again this is tied into polka dot as well so Decentralized Finance Lending Protocol Compound has unveiled a new blockchain that will enable cross-chain collateral. So they're using Substrate and tying this into the Polkadot network. To complement Gateway, Compound is planning to build Starports, which allow function as on and off ramps to the new blockchain for users to borrow or deposit assets or collateral. Leshner elaborated that Starports are the glue that connects a blockchain to Gateway as they can be mixed and matched in various combinations for different networks. So looking to build out decentralized finance, you need to do that through interoperability. And it looks like Compound is using Gateway in this, in this uh, fashion. So reading once more from the article, the Gateway chain announced on March 2nd has been described as a cross-chain interest rate market that allows users to borrow assets that are native to one chain, such as Ethereum, with collateral from another chain, such as Polkadot or Celo. Compound Finance originally announced the platform in December 2020 when it was called Compound Chain. All right. The last bit of news before we get up out of here. Another Polkadot piece. So really cool stuff coming from the Polkadot ecosystem this week. Polkadot-based synthetic asset platform attracts 1.64 million funding. So when you think synthetic assets platform, think synthetics so shadows network a trading platform based on polka dot is wrapping up its strategic financing round saying it's ready to step out from the shadows Keck. the company's goal is to democratize finance and enable investors to gain exposure to assets including stocks commodities indices and more by enabling anyone to trade on-chain assets from anywhere so when you think of Shadows Network, this is Synthetics on Polkadot. They got 1.64 million in funding. Polkadot is increasing its ecosystem value. Woo! All right, guys. We are an hour and about 30 minutes, I would say, hour and 40 minutes in. 
What an episode. You guys powered me through that whole thing, man. Shout out to Javier again for that donation, 20 pounds. I'll remember the pounds sterling forever. Absolutely awesome, awesome engagement from this episode, guys. I'm going to wrap up. We have Lads Radio later tonight. I believe that's starting at So in an hour and a half, we are having Lads Radio at 6 p.m. Eastern Standard. Convert that how you may. And then we have Lads Game Night. We're playing Blancos tonight. So that is the deal. Thank you guys for showing up today. I saw the comments that we should be getting more. But you know what? That's going to come in time. And I'm actually very, very happy that I get to have this time with you guys. You 50, 60, 70, 80 guys right now. Guys and gals. We're going to look back. 200, 300, 1,000 concurrent viewers. I'll look back and say, I remember when we had 80. Those were fun days. So, awesome to have you guys. Again, the winners from the previous competition, Bait Shop, Billy, Bullseye North, and Choyna. I will be reaching out for you guys. You guys won the survey submissions. And we're, we're doing that construction in Lad City. I, I need the nobles to get a little bit more engaged there with the voting. And then we'll announce the winners of renaming the Citadel, of, which is our like main square. We need a name for our main square, as well as DeFi chat and uh, NFT chat. So once the nobles make those votes, uh, and only nobles can vote, I can see uh, when like who's voting. Only nobles can vote, and then we will make a decision on what those names would be. King Lolly Bell is saying, "Hey, bro, can I get an invite? Ask me in. Uh, ask me in in Discord. I'll get you one." Orlando is saying the decentralized Lego pieces just continue to stack up and build a masterpiece. James Batam is saying, "Are you gay? It's okay if you are. It's 2021." I don't know. I don't know. I am not gay, and it is okay if anyone is in 2021. So, interesting question to wrap up the episode. I will be. Let me get you guys that lads link before I drop off here. See if I can't get this for you guys. Any last comments, please drop them in the chat. Other than asking my sexual orientation, I will answer most questions. Apparently, I'll answer that question as well. Oh, man. Guys, I'll be dropping the lads in Lad City. Uh, definitely need to get my 2FA for this, this uh, role sign up as well. So I'll be dropping the lads in Lad City today. Uh, Eldin is asking, how does one rank up in Lad City? You hold more lads, you earn more lads, you rank up in Lad City. James Jafal is saying dot, dot, dot. That's a little bit how I felt, but you know, people are going to be, people are going to ask the questions they may. Orlando saying, mahalo Q, you powered up the lads today. Our vibe, our tribe. I appreciate it. I can, I'll post the, uh, the music here, uh, after we, we get up out of here. All right, guys. So again, I tried to get the lads there. Uh, I, I need to set up the, uh, or I need to access it via 2FA on my phone. Uh, that will be dropping in lad city. So I'll be dropping the lads you earned today in lad city. Make sure you're there in the next 10 minutes. And I will drop that, uh, to everyone that showed up today. If you're not in lad city, if you haven't set up your roll wallet, get into the discord Basically, you can type lads, L-A-D-Z, dot city in your Discord or in your browser, and it'll take you directly to us, and we'll get you set up. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for, for taking part in today's show. Again, couldn't do it without you guys. Uh, really, really appreciate the engagement. I will head up out of here. Expect those rewards in Lad City. And like Dimitri says, happy trading. <laughs>